Berlin is the capital city of Germany, but unlike other well-known European capitals, it hesitates to portray itself as great. A casual traveler might overlook Berlin for this very reason, but to me, there is no more compelling place in the world to visit. Berlin is a great place to write on Wednesday. Berlin was founded in 1237. By 1400, it was home to around 8,000 people. In 1415, the Hohenzollern dynasty began, making Berlin its royal home. The Hohenzollern reign lasted over 500 years before the collapse of the monarchy on November 9, 1918, just two days before the end of World War I. The Baroque palace that Elector Frederick III built for his wife, Sophie Charlotte, was finished in 1699. The neoclassical Brandenburg Gate that stands today was commissioned by Frederick William II and finished in 1791. The quadriga that stands atop the gate was added in 1793. In 1806, Napoleon Bonaparte claimed the quadriga as war spoils and had it taken to Paris. It was returned after Napoleon was deposed in 1814. After the Germans and their allies lost the Great War, Germans faced not only national defeat, but dire financial straits. While the Great Depression began in 1929 in the United States, it reached Germany even sooner. It was in the context of national desperation that, in 1933, a new political party secured the trust of a third of German voters, more than any other party, with promises of prosperity for true Germans. That party, the National Socialists, appointed Adolf Hitler as government chancellor later that year. That is when Berlin's history came to new distinction and infamy. Adolf Hitler was a charismatic leader who won the loyalty of ordinary Germans by promising to make the German nation great again. When he and his government began taking away privileges of those who were considered socially marginal, Germans in the political mainstream either cheered or turned a blind eye to what was happening. Those who resisted were often arrested as traitors and sent to concentration camps. Hitler wanted Berlin to become the capital of the world, and he wanted its architecture to reflect its status as the world's center. His architect, Albert Speer, tested the feasibility of a building that would have dwarfed every other building on Earth. The heavy load-bearing body used for Speer's feasibility testing still stands today in Berlin. After the Nazis and their allies lost World War II in 1945, Berlin was divided into four sectors that were overseen by the victors, England, France, the United States, and the Soviet Union. Two years later, in 1947, the Cold War began, a nuclear face-off between Eastern and Western powers. The Berlin Wall was built around the Soviet sector of Berlin to keep residents from fleeing to more prosperous areas of Berlin. In 1949, East Germany, which was called the German Democratic Republic, or GDR, was created. In East Berlin, a TV tower was built in 1965 with a view of, and within view of, all of Berlin. It still stands today as a museum and rotating restaurant. When the Berlin Wall fell on November 9, 1989, Germany was reunited, but nothing was the same as it had been at any prior moment in history. Since reunification, Germany, and Berlin in particular, has sought to find ways to remember its history without skewing toward any one lens of that history. 
The Jewish Museum of Berlin, designed by architect Daniel Liebeskind, is one strong example of architecture that seeks to make visible multiple hues of the past. The museum begins with the felt experience of Jewish isolation and degradation in Germany through light and shadow, unexpected angles, unlevel walking surfaces, clanging art, and more. Once the context has been set, one climbs into the memory and future of the Jewish people. The beauty of what once was, the pain of what was irrevocably lost, the memory and diversity that is now, and the hope that continues its way forward. Berlin is a city that intentionally seeks to remember all of itself, the good, the evil, the banal, the profound. It recognizes how swiftly and easily the impulses of human fear and hunger for power can turn into widespread evil in the hands of charismatic political leaders, especially when citizens justify atrocities of those leaders by claiming that no one is perfect and that whatever leads to the salvation of me and my country must be God's will. Every story I've ever written has a remnant of Berlin in it for those with eyes to see. Berlin is one of three cities prominently featured in my forthcoming trilogy. I recommend Berlin to every writer who wishes to deepen and expand their storytelling. If you enjoyed this video, you can hit like and subscribe to receive more videos about intriguing places to write on Wednesday. Thanks for watching.